In films about love comedies, Bo Derek is a major player. Acting in Blake Edwards' 1979 film, Ten Inches catapulted her to stardom. Her stunning good looks caused people all over the world to adore her. Her movie hairdo with braids went viral. Her marriage to the much older John Derrick was a particularly contentious chapter in her personal life. Bo was raised by her family in California. Her mom handled film makeup while her dad was a mariner. Parental divorce occurred while Bo was an adolescent. It was then that she met John Derrick, a man several decades her senior, and the two of them remained together for many years. Many felt John was too possessive, which contributed to their dissatisfaction with their relationship. It seems like Bo's life narrative might stand on its own as a film. For a period, she even lived in a mobile home and was acquainted with John Derrick's ex-wives. Bo has never been one to sit on her hands and has instead been fearlessly following her gut. John Derrick directed a few films starring her, although they were mostly commercial failures. She began seeing John Corbett, another actor, after his death. Nevertheless, she continues to face challenges stemming from her history with John Derrick. Despite the many low points in her life, Bo is still a household figure in Hollywood. The sun-kissed beaches of Mykonos, a Greek island brimming with romance and folklore, were the setting for the fateful dance between Bo and John Derrick. Veteran filmmaker John Derrick was on the lookout for new talent when he saw Bo, a 16-year-old with golden curls who was just starting out in the industry. As their narrative evolved, it was set against the background of young aspirations and the glitter of Hollywood. When John, a guy of great cinematic talent, took Bo under his wing, she was suddenly a star, although she was previously known as Mary Kathleen Collins. Even though John had some first misgivings about her blonde hair, he eventually cast her as the lead in Once Upon a Love. And yet, theirs was an unconventional love tale. John, who was bound to Linda Evans, felt an overwhelming attraction to the lively beau. He gave in to her charms like a moth to a flame, ending his marriage to begin a new life with his youthful inspiration. As Bo's fame skyrocketed because to ten, John reveled in her triumph and was anxious to shape her into an icon of elegance and beauty. The complicated dynamic of control and ambition resided under the surface of adulation, however. Bo's career and public image were meticulously shaped by John's Svengali-like influence. Although their collaboration yielded good results, it was not trouble-free. Bo struggled with the consequences of her decisions and the impact of love that came from unexpected sources as rumors of scandal and social criticism swirled around her. As she gracefully and poisedly navigated the turbulent rivers of fame and passion, she emerged as a symbol of perseverance. As she nears the end of her life, Bo thinks back on the passionate love affair that shaped her younger years. As she faces the history of a love that challenged norms and strained the bounds of the heart, memories arise, some bittersweet and others pleasant. The passage of time may have changed their love story, but it will live on in Hollywood legend as a symbol of the irrepressible force of love, despite its paradoxes and complexities. The close relationship she shared with him gave her the confidence that she could conquer any challenge. That was the purity of Beau's heart. With Europe as the backdrop, it seemed as if fate had painted a beautiful image of their future as a couple. But it wasn't only Europe that enchanted them. Bo is now living it up on her California ranch with her lover, actor John Corbett, who is four years her junior. Looking back on her first love, she is struck by Linda, Bo's romantic competitor, for her kindness. After John and Linda's marriage ended, Bo expressed her shame. Bo described what happened and added that she feels self-loathing whenever she considers her actions. According to her, it's the absolute worst course of action. It was a complex and dramatic circumstance. Some may argue that her continued presence at John Derrick's side till his death was predetermined. However, she seems to have found an explanation in this. She still thinks it was wrong from a moral standpoint. Despite her mixed feelings for Linda, the little girl went on to confess her undying devotion to the veteran actress. Linda has always been very welcoming to Bo. Bo felt horrible whenever Linda was around, and that feeling has stayed with him even now, years later. Linda is someone who Bo holds in the greatest respect because of how gorgeous she is. 
Bo still can't seem to move on from her behavior with Linda. Bo apologizes to Linda and says she will never make the same mistake again. Surprisingly, Linda, who had agreed to be interviewed for her documentary Botterick in my own words, manages to keep her cool when faced with the woman who expelled her husband. In Bo's opinion, the most surprising development was Linda's decision to participate in the documentary. To her, it was news of the greatest shock. While working with Linda, she states that many unpleasant feelings were triggered by remembering her time as John's lover. According to her, everyone involved was going through a terrible time. When Bo considers that period of her life, she is filled with regret. Nonetheless, for some reason, Linda has been exceptionally kind to Bo and he is perplexed as to why. Linda, however, maintains that she and Bo Derek remain friends in spite of the awful affair. Bo receives her heartfelt thanks. If Linda had stayed married to John Derek, she claims, she would not have landed her iconic role on Dynasty. It was via her extramarital romance that she was able to get the role. After her marriage collapsed, Linda took any job that would pay the bills, and that's how she landed the role of Crystal Carrington on Dynasty. Despite her appreciation, Linda admits that the situation Bo Derek set up was really bad for her. Instead of going through this, she thought of just terminating her life. Because he was flawless, her love for John Derek never wavered. John Derek was her intended husband from the time she was a teenager, a fact she confided in her sister about. The link which she saw as a gift from on high eventually faded, but she cherished it. Her dream had come to an end. She considers it one of the most challenging things that have ever occurred to her. Even the most unfortunate events have the potential to become the most wonderful ones. Without John Derrick's opposition, Linda would never have had the chance to star in the breathtaking dynasty. Despite her agent's reservations about her comeback to the profession, Linda managed to get a groundbreaking role. Linda Evans did not harbor resentment toward Bo in the end, despite the fact that Bo unintentionally subjected her to several difficult experiences. Bo and Linda are supposedly buddies, and Linda has even told Bo that she is beautiful. After peacefully resolving their problems, Bo and Linda Evans are still deeply in debt to one other for Linda's time in Hollywood. When Bo was a kid growing up in Southern California, he had carefree beach life. The actress had plenty of vacation time to surf and soak in the sun, thanks to her father's job at sailing brand Hobie Cat. Also, her mom was a famous celebrity hairstylist and cosmetics artist, so she had to travel a lot for her profession. If Bo wanted to be a movie star, he had to drop out of school. Despite her youth, it left an indelible mark on her life, as she recalls. She reflects about her troubled youth on a regular basis. She wasn't expecting to be in John Derrick's company. It was like receiving a miraculous credit card. Despite her marital status, she was sought after by several Hollywood men due to her stunning good features. According to her, Bo was shielded from some of the danger since she was seeing a man with a reputation for himself, someone whom many distrusted. Producers' attempts to kiss her during interviews were an infringement of her privacy, in her opinion. However, she now kicks them in the crotch region, a clever protective method that her mother had taught her from a young age. Thankfully, her previous husband was never aggressive or violent, so she counts herself fortunate. Most people think of Bo when they see the photo of the slender blonde woman in a bikini running along the beach in 10. Comparing her current look to that iconic shot reveals that she has been blessed with the passage of time, as she still radiates the same classic beauty and grace. No matter how beautiful she is, at 70 years old she would never put herself in danger by trying to replicate the iconic scene for fear of accusations of cultural appropriation. Bo isn't exactly smitten with the trend at the moment, she says. African-American ladies at the time often complimented her on her hairstyle, she said. Managers who were biased toward the women's hairstyles made it illegal for them to wear braids on the workplace. Bo claims that because the times have changed, she no longer has any interest in wearing cornrows. Though she admits that her life was complete when married to John Derrick, she asserts that the stability of her current marriage is more important. Having children was never an option for her since her life was always chaotic. The more time she spends with John Corbett, the more power she feels over her life. The two of them take pleasure in their activities together. 
John Corbett pushed her to be open and honest. And she claims that John's hilarious antics are the source of her constant laughter. They consider themselves lucky to have this land on which to escape the mayhem of their job. Bo has always dreamed of living a life close to animals and the natural world, even as a tiny kid. She considers herself fortunate to have the opportunity to accomplish that right now. Since Bo didn't have the opportunity to experience her teenage romance when she was really a teenager, she believes her friend when she says that she is living it out now. Even though she has made some strange decisions, some bad ones, and seen some crazy movies, she takes comfort in the knowledge that she has maintained her dignity. In passing, Bo said that she often skipped school when she was a youngster in order to get rides to the beach. According to her, she is now utterly afraid of behaving in such a manner and would never ever consider it. In addition, recalled an incident in which, while riding alone, she came into contact with some sketchy characters. She pleaded with them to release her, and they complied. She felt stupid about hitchhiking and laughed at the notion that it had been safer in the past when she and her pals took a month off school to visit the beach. Despite her claims that she wanted to escape the system, the young rebel ended up returning to school and focusing on acting since she was so bored. An interview for a film set in Greece was announced shortly thereafter by her agency. Fantasies was the working title of this picture, which had an interesting origin story. The working title of Bo Derrick's 1973 film was Once Upon a Love, but he later changed it to Fantasies. Production on Once Upon a Love was winding down in Munich when funds were seized from it by a German film lab due to budget restrictions. Before producer Kevin Castleman got his hands on it, it was kept in a safe for quite some time. Derek and Bo went to court to stop Castleman from distributing the film internationally. They ultimately determined that continuing with the lawsuit was a waste of time and energy, so they dropped it. After a long gestation, the picture ultimately premiered in 1981 under the working title, Fantasies. Reviewers were not pleased, condemning the film for being too serious and poorly made. Bo Derek plays a young Greek island girl who struggles with the decision of whether to remain a girl or a woman. Peter Hooten plays a young guy who lives with her and is as confused as she is. They were brought up as one even though they didn't have any blood links. Bo Derek makes many appearances throughout the movie, the movie did not sit well with Bo Derek. She argues that fantasies are flawed, chaotic, and unreasonable. Kevin Castleman, who became a producer after representing her as an agency, calls the film the movie that would not die. Castleman had a key role in the deal's negotiations and the hiring of Bo and Peter Hooten. The film's graphic nature doesn't appear to bother Bo. Bo is seen bathing in one scene and emerging from the water in the dark in another. Bo takes exception to the film's status as a sex picture. During the filming, she claimed to have been only 16 years old. She wished she could have watched her husband finish the film since external forces damaged the original concept and drove it to its current state. Bo does take pleasure in it, to a lesser degree. Since she met John on the set of the film, it was a watershed moment in her life. The next picture she directed was, alas, equally unsuccessful. She barely made an appearance in her 1979 follow-up film, Orca, before a killer whale ate her leg. The part that launched Bo to pin-up fame and cemented her renowned image was her debut performance opposite Dudley Moore in the romantic comedy 10. What followed was a lot more gratifying. Bo jumped across a beach in alluring slow motion to the pulsating rhythms of Ravel's Bolero. Star Mo was captivated by her mesmerizing performance. All of a sudden, she was a pinup icon. Later on, her husband was the director of two action films, Bolero and Tarzan, the Ape Man. Fans of both the movies and literature had mixed feelings about Tarzan, the Ape Man, with some enjoying the story and others applauding the acting and the R rating. Some have called it one of the most wretched pieces of cinematic art. The picture made $36.5 million, which is more than quadruple its budget from an initial prediction of $6.5 million, proving that it was financially successful despite the bad reviews. Some reviewers believed that Tarzan was underdeveloped and that the film wasted time on Jane Parker, who played Bo's role. Furthermore, Bo's physical attributes were the center of attention in two scenes, 
one including a body painting process and the other featuring him taking a bath. Secondly, Derek arrived without a shirt. John Derek directed the sensual comedy drama Bolero, in which Bo featured. Bolero follows a young lady as she has a sexual awakening and travels the world in quest of her ideal companion. The film's X rating is often given to very violent or sexually explicit horror flicks because of the graphic sexual content and the amount of nudity in it. Reviews for Bo's Bolero were mostly negative. The role was responsible for Bo's second Golden Raspberry Award for Worst Actress, which she proudly accepted. The picture won a plethora of questionable accolades, including five from the same group. It's low production quality and helmed by an incompetent director making it one of the worst films of all time. John Derrick received several unsavory awards, including Worst Writing and Worst Director. Olivia Culpo was the worst new member of the cast. Bolero was slapped in the face for the final time by Elmer and Peter Bernstein, who composed the score. They were given the honor of penning the most terrible musical piece. Six years ago, she made her last appearance in front of the camera for a film. She got back into the film industry with another joint venture with her spouse. Unfortunately, this endeavor, which was named Ghost Can't Do It, failed. In his spare time, Bo Derek is an avid equestrian and has a hand in a number of political and social causes. On her own time, she is an outspoken supporter of disabled veterans' rights and a voice in the campaign to have horses killed for their meat by the Animal Welfare Institute. Even though she is getting close to 70 years old, her beauty and poise have not diminished. I hope you like watching. We'll see you in the subsequent one.